Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today we're going to do something different. I'm going to make a push block for the jointer. Now, my jointer came with these little units and they're not always suitable. Sometimes they're too small because the wood can move around. Uh, and because I just got finished making some of these not long ago, I thought, why not take this and make a longer kind of version of this that'll be perfect for the jointer. So let's get started. So to make this, I haven't quite figured out exactly what it's going to be like, but we'll, as we'll design it as we go along. So I have this three quarter inch plywood, nice and flat and stable. I'm going to cut a couple of strips, about an inch and a half and about four inches. And the little sh narrow one I'm going to use as kind of a fence. And I'm going to install it with dowels so that I get a good alignment uh, and it's nice and solid in there. And I'll also glue it. Now I'm just going to drill a series of holes across here. Now I'm just going to replicate those holes and when I get finished I'll be able to flip those over and that will go in there like that. So I'm just going to carry on here. I'm going to put a little bit of glue in all of the holes and the dowels are really just to position it. They're not, in this case, they're really not adding uh, anything to the strength of this. The glue will do all the, the strength that I need. Now the next thing I want to do is install my handles on here and I know I have this uh, fence sort of thing along the side here but I do want these handles in the middle so what I may end up doing is just taking this to the table saw and just take a little bit of a, an edge off that because that doesn't this uh, miter on the side of this won't matter uh, as long as I can get my hands in but I'm going to put these on first because I can take this off after if I find that it's in my way. I'm going to drill one pilot hole in one end and then I'll use that as my guideline. The next thing I need to make is a little piece of wood that's going to come out here that I can put wood in so that when I'm pushing this through the router it will grab the wood underneath. Now I'm going to use my router table to make mine but you could easily do it on the drill press and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So for this cut I'm using uh, some quarter inch hardwood that I had on hand and I'm using a quarter inch spiral bit and what I want to do is cut a little slot in there. And the way I've got the router set up, I've got a stop on either side. So what I'm going to do is what we call a plunge cut. So I'm going to drop that onto the router bit, then move it slowly across to the next one, uh, then turn the router off. There, I just cut up a whole bunch of T's that can fit in there and they'll just slide in like that and now I have a stopper for the wood. I've decided to put a layer of anti-skid on the bottom as well and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pour this on like this and what I'm going to do next 
is I've got a, a throwaway um, roller, uh, sort of a foam roller, and I'm just going to roll this contact cement on here. And all the contact cement that I roll on here, it has to sit for at least 15 minutes. I'm going to put a little bit more on there. And what I'm going to do now that the roller is coated, I'm going to use the same roller and just put a thin coat on top of this with the material that I have here and that should be enough for that to lay that down. Okay, well it's been about 15 minutes or so. Let's just take that. I'm going to line that up there a little bit. Just go right on top of there like that. That stuck down well. That's good. Now what I want to do here, I just want to keep that from moving around. So the whole purpose of this jig is to help at the jointer and particularly when you've got wood that's a little bit warped which is quite often and when you push this wood through sometimes it goes through one way and as you're pushing it it wants to move it wants to go another way but with the fence on this because you can put the fence right up against the fence of the jointer that means you can keep your wood underneath stable so that you can get one good side so that you don't have to keep jointing and rejointing because it's moving when it goes through. So I'm going to give it a whirl and let's see what this does. Okay, let's have a quick look. As it was jointing this, I could feel that it was getting more and more stable. And you can see where the jointer took off some wood there and it took off wood there. And now look at it, it's nice and stable. It's not moving around at all. And now you could actually start using your hand paddles because it's not moving and you can see a little bit better what you're doing. So all this is, is a starter for when your wood is warped or bent or not easy to put through the jointer. And it's a good safe way of holding on trapping your wood and pushing it through to get a good level surface that you can start working with. Well, that concludes my video for today. I must say, I'm pretty happy with the way this worked. Uh, it doesn't take too much work to get a nice flat board to start working with, or at least a stable board. And you know what I really like? Because of the handles up here, it keeps your hands away from the jointer knives. You've got a fence that you can align with. Uh, just a really good, safe way of working with wood that's a little bit unstable, warped, or, or uh, coved or something. So I'm uh, pretty happy with this. Might be something you want to add to your workshop. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.